Good morning, and welcome to worship on this third Sunday of Advent. Thank you for joining us. My name is Pastor Carl, and our prayers are with you this day as we continue through this season of Advent. A few announcements before we begin our worship. Sad news, uh, Fawn Kaufman uh, has passed away. She is the the mother of um, Fawn Smith, so please keep her family in your prayers. Um, Council, as you know, uh, hopefully, has made a difficult decision to suspend in-person worship until January 10th. And at that time, we will reevaluate the situation and make a decision from there. However, Council also approved that programs like Micah's Backpack, South County Food Bank, and Julie's Kitchen can continue use of the building. Please pray for all those who are struggling with food insecurity and those who are dealing with COVID at this time. As you can see, the Christmas poinsettias decorations are up, and if they, uh, if the bulletin has not been listed on the website, it will include a dedication to that later this week. Let us begin our worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, whose steadfast loves endures forever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, forgive us when we are quick to point the finger at someone else. Forgive us when we put our heads down and ignore the cries of injustice. Forgive us when we presume to understand the complexity of issues that divide and distract the peoples of this world. Merciful God, forgive us, heal us, encourage us, and speak through us, that we may be transformed through the refiner's fire. And the offerings of our hands and of our hearts may prepare the way for the Christ child to be welcomed into this world among us in peace. Amen. People of God, know that you are forgiven. You receive the full free gift of God's grace and forgiveness. Amen. Let us pray. Stir up the wills of your people, Lord God, and open our ears to the words of John's witness, that anointed with your Spirit, we too may testify to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All right. Good morning. The first lesson is from Isaiah chapter 61, verses 1 through 4 and 8 through 11. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning, the mantle of praise instead of a faint spirit. They will be called oaks of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, to display in his glory. They shall build up in the ancient ruins. They shall rise up the former de- devastations. They shall repair the ruined cities, the devastations of many de- generations. For I, the Lord, love justice. I hate robbery and wrongdoing. I will faithfully give them their recompense. Companize, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are people whom the Lord has blessed. I will greatly rejoice in the Lord. My whole being shall exult in my God, for he has clothed me with the garments of salvation. He has covered me with the robe of righteousness a, as a bridegroom decks himself with a garland and as a bride adorns herself with her jewels. For the earth brings forth its shoots 
and as a garden causes what is sown in it to spring up, so the Lord God will cause righteousness and praise to spring up before all the nations. The second lesson uh, is from Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 through 24. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Jesus Christ for you. Do not quench the spirit, do not despise the words of the prophets, but test everything, hold fast to what is good, abstain from what from every form of evil. May the God of peace himself sanctify you entirely, and may your spirit and soul and body be kept bound and blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do this. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Marianne. And we say, O come, O come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel that mourns in lonely exile here until the Son of God appear. Rejoice, rejoice. Emmanuel shall come to you, O Israel. Our gospel reading for today comes from John, the first chapter. Listen to what God is saying to you. A man named John was sent from God. He came as a witness to testify concerning the light, so that through him everyone would believe in the light. He himself was not the light, but his mission was to testify concerning the light. This is John's testimony when the Jewish leaders in Jerusalem sent priests and Levites to ask him, Who are you? John confessed, I am not the Christ. They asked him, Then who are you? Are you Elijah? John said, I am not. Are you the prophet? John answered, No. They asked, Who are you? We need to give an answer to those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? John replied, I am a voice crying out in the wilderness. Make the Lord's paths straight. Just as the prophet Isaiah said, those sent by the Pharisees asked, Why do you baptize if you aren't the Christ, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered, I baptize with water. Someone greater stands among you, whom you do not recognize. He comes after me, but I am not worthy to untie the straps of his sandals. 
This encounter took place across Jordan in Bethany where John was baptizing. This is the gospel of the Lord, and we say thanks be to God. Good morning, everyone. Again, my name is Pastor Carl, and thank you for being with us on this third Sunday of Advent. Let us pray. Good and gracious God, be with us. You are God among us, and as we await your coming, your inbreaking, your birth into this world, may our lives be a testament a testimony to you. Amen. I have a confession to make, people of God. It wasn't until middle or high school that I really started paying attention to what was said during worship. And it wasn't until high school, for sure, when I began taking my own faith seriously. And it was within my last two years of high school that I got involved in something called the Lutheran Youth Organization. And through the Lutheran Youth Organization, or LYO, some 50-plus high school-age Lutherans from around Delaware and Maryland serve as leaders. Together, they help run retreats for middle school and high school-age youth, and now even elementary school youth. The two big events, retreats, are called Free Ride, which is for the middle schoolers, and the one for high schoolers is called Road Trip. I know that the youth from Trinity has continued attending these retreats over the years. But a fun little known fact, the first retreat I attended was actually with Trinity back when Road Trip was in Baltimore. You see, no one from my church, except for myself, was attending and even though I lived in Baltimore, the, the leaders from Trinity welcomed me into their flock, into their fold. And it was then that a cocky young teenager version of Carl thought that he could beat someone named Sarah Leffler in a game of air hockey at the ESPN zone. And boy, was he wrong. But even as a high schooler, one of my favorite parts about those retreats came at the Sunday morning closing worship. Just imagine, hundreds of youth gathered together as their mountaintop experience, their weekend retreat comes to an end, all of them packed into a hotel ballroom, praising God, and then in the middle of worship, they see one of their peers stand up, get on stage in front of everybody to give a testimony, to give witness as to how God has worked and moved with and through them over the course of the weekend and throughout their lives. It is an incredibly moving experience to see these young people articulate their faith in such a way. I know I enjoyed attending them as a youth, and I have even continued attending as an adult mentor and leader. Now, fast forward to the year after I graduated from college, and I found myself in the city of Chicago serving at a nonprofit organization through the Lutheran Volunteer Corps. It was there that I started attending a Methodist church called Urban Village Church. And it was there that I felt like I was attending the closing worship of Road Trip every single Sunday. And one reason that it felt that way was because just about every week, someone got up and gave a testimony. Now, it wasn't an altar call. People didn't just come up randomly because each week someone prepared their thoughts. They were able to prepare what they were going to say. And they weren't necessarily earth-shattering messages either. They only typically lasted about two or three minutes. Sometimes what folks had to say was as simple as how grateful they were to be a part of a church community 
who supported and loved them. At one point, after having a one-on-one conversation with the pastor, he invited me to give a testimony, and I was nervous. But with a bit of guidance and support, I was able to stand up in front of the church, which actually met in a theater, and give a brief testimony. When I was growing up, I, I didn't pay attention to what was said in church. But this testimony gave me an experience to see the value of preaching and what other people have to say. It gave me an opportunity to realize how important storytelling and offering witness to what Scripture has to say. It is this testimony and giving witness which are the key components of what our gospel talks about today. Now, if you remember from last week in the gospel of Mark, John is given the title of baptizer. But this week, this week is a bit different. It's important to note that this reading from the gospel of John was actually written not by the person we typically know as John the Baptist, but John the Evangelist. And even though John is still baptizing, he is more focused on giving that testimony and offering witness. In fact, the word witness shows up about 50 times in the Gospel of John. So today, instead of calling him John the Baptist, he's more like John the Witness or John the Voice. He even quotes Isaiah where it says, I am a voice crying out in the wilderness. That phrase, I am, is such an important one in the Gospel of John. And he is saying that he is not a prophet. He is not Elijah, and he is not the Messiah. Instead, John is a voice testifying, giving witness to, in calling attention to Jesus, the Messiah, and the good news, the gospel that Jesus brings. So people of God, when we give testimony, we are like John, calling attention to the amazing way that God is working in the world. And when others offer testimony, we too get to hear the good news of the gospel through their witness, which is an incredible gift. Now, giving testimonies provide a lot of other benefits as well. They can help us grow in our discipleship by providing an opportunity for us to practice talking about our faith to others. Now, I know the idea of getting up in front of other people And talking about our lives is not only vulnerable, but can be intimidating. But we all have a story to tell. And when we share those stories, it connects us in a ways that we can't even imagine. Offering witness is also in and of itself an offering. That offering can be beneficial in the church life. Numerous books that I've read in seminary talk about how beneficial testimonies can be inside and even outside worship. They are known to help increase giving, both through time spent in service and financial giving. Testimonies can also be an incredible form of evangelism. In fact, just this past week, one of our council members talked about how they would not have joined this church if someone hadn't invited them. And when I gave a testimony at Urban Village Church, I invited a few friends of mine along. Not only did I feel supported, knowing that they were there in attendance, but they themselves got to experience a worship service that was different than what they normally knew. What a gift indeed. People of God, 
I am convinced that testimony offering witness to Jesus is vital to our faith. The good news of Christ begins with the testimony of John the witness who calls attention to Jesus. John's message reverberates across time, especially now in the season of Advent, as we anticipate the birth of Jesus the Messiah. And even after Jesus' death, the good news is spread because of the testimony of Mary when she sees that the stone has been rolled away. The spread of the good news relies on testimony. Our faith is strengthened when we hear the testimony and stories of others. The Spirit moves through us when we give testimony. It is good news in action. So like John, may we too offer witness through our lives and the testimonies that we lift up. May we listen to testimonies of others. And when we receive the good news of the gospel through those testimonies, may we let it shine, let it shine, let it shine. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always and also with you. Please send a message of hope and peace. Share your story with others. We also want to give thanks for the offerings that people give of time, service, and their financial generosity. Thank you for supporting the missions of this church for God's glory. Let us pray. For each petition, I will end with, Lord, in your mercy, and you may respond with, hear our prayer. God of power and might, shine your radiance and come quickly to this weary world. Hear our prayers for everyone in need. God of preachers and messengers, you have entrusted your church with the work of proclaiming the good news. Strengthen the witness of bishops, pastors, deacons, church musicians, lay leaders, and all people who contribute their prayers and talents to public worship. Embed your word in their lives. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of every living creature, you announce the year of your favor for all creation. Extend your kindness and relief to endangered animals and plants. Strengthen the human beings who rely on the rhythms of nature to make their living, especially farmers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of exiles and wanderers, you repair what was once destroyed. We pray for the people who have been displaced from their homes because of fire, flood, earthquakes, and other disasters. Support the work of Lutheran World Relief and Lutheran Disaster Response and all disaster relief organizations in their recovery efforts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Tender God, you know the sorrow and joy alike. We pray without ceasing for those in the fam- our families and congregation who struggle to find joy. Comfort those who grieve. Be a companion to all who are lonely and those who are sick or struggling, especially Hutch, Janice, the family of Fawn, Susan, Bob, others on our prayer list, and those we lift before you now, out loud or in our hearts. Gather all people into your healing embrace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of sinners and saints, you offer joy even in the midst of our grief. We are grateful for the beloved and imperfect people whose lives testified to your radiant love, especially Fawn Kaufman. Anoint all who mourn with the oil of gladness. Lord, in your mercy, 
hear our prayer. Draw near to us, O God, and receive our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And let us now pray the prayer that our Lord Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive God's blessing. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.